Uh, we pick up back in Bavlona's cottage. And uh, you've been doing some work for her. Uh, you've already done some work for her. Uh, she asked you to do a couple of things before she would hear your pleas uh, and uh, kind of make any deal with you whatsoever. And this led to a, uh, a combat with a gelatinous cylinder. Uh, which which you guys survived, and uh, you saw that the pool started to run clear again. And uh, as this happens, well, I think we kind of picked up right at the we left right at the end of combat. Yes. So you were down on the first floor. Uh, Bavlona went up to the third floor. You saw a bunch of strangeness with um, this uh, guest she had, which had some kind of shadow uh doing some shifty things upstairs as well you obviously met the red cap and you found the beating heart in the freezer uh the house itself just um, a general layer of unpleasantness um, so we're picking up with you guys downstairs the uh, water is starting to flow cleanly again and uh, how are you what are you doing from here did we need to take a short rest how are you looking, Vito? Uh, I mean, I'm looking looking okay. Just a couple hit points behind Matt, so okay. I'm all right. You hear like shuffling from yeah, upstairs. Yeah. The lonelings constantly running around the house and creating this this, this like scarpering sound everywhere. Have we? Do we hear anything from like the third floor? I, I guess it's the third floor. Her bedroom, like moving around by her or her voice or anything. You. I mean, every now and again, you'd hear like a large creak, uh, probably indicating her moving around. But other than that, no. I think I was when we last left. I was introducing the the guy I rescued, um, Bansel, Barsol. Yes, Bansel. Yeah. Yeah, I was introducing him to the group, kind of giving them a rundown on, you know, that I found him. He was locked up. I must say, I'm rather grateful for being let out. It's quite cramped in that cage. And uh, not to mention, kind of starts to rub his uh, behind. Red Cap is quite fond of poking me. Yeah, that's what nice to meet you. Uh, likewise, you? I'm sure. Uh, yes, what were you? How long have you been here? What did you uh, get grabbed for? Uh, it's um, been a while at this point. I would say for a couple of days. I think I was uh, going to be one of the next meals soon. I wasn't. I don't know what I did wrong, really. I was jumped by a couple of hair and gun bandits. Said I was uh, too cheerful. Uh, fortunately for me. Well, hopefully, you don't have to deal with the bugger anymore. When we go get her, it might be best if she doesn't see. I'm thinking the same thing. Um, well, if it's all the same to you, I might take the opportunity to slip out. I say, yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. Wouldn't want you sticking around here and getting stuck again. Do you have my Where will eternal you go? gratitude? Um, he looks around. I have family waiting for me uh, on the eastern side of the swamp. Can we ask for you? What's your name? Yes, I'll put it in chat. Vensel, Vensel of the Low Heels. If you are ever up against the mountains, uh, please look for my people. You're welcome to... Um, Welcome to our hospitality. 
did you get your crossbow back? Said. Yes, I did. He he gave it back to me. He would also. Uh, you can see he. There's a bit of junk on the floor that's blown in leaves and twigs and, and such like that. Uh, he bends down and picks up a stick, a seemingly normal stick, and he uh, whispers something to it before handing it to um, to Sydney. I get like a and, little bit of puzzled look. Like, oh, why, why, thank you. As you accept it, though, you see a tiny flower blooms at the end of the stick. A bit of good fortune uh, to favor your way. Um, so effectively, for 24 hours, it will function as a stone of good luck that does not require attunement. Okay, cool. Oh, that's good. Um, a stone of good luck, it increases like all of your saving throws, all your abilities by one. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so until at uh, 24 hours, the uh, the flowers will fall off. The petals will fall off at least. Uh, so here you are. I'll just give you the handout so you can refer back to it for the effect. So Before he does uh, take off, see... I do want to ask about getting my robe back because I might need it for the, uh, <laughs> the council. Yeah, there's more than enough strange bits and bobs in this floor. Uh, he can go and get some clothes off of the, uh, off of the mannequins. Elvin just kind of walks into this room that our new friend had opened up and just starts looking around. Kind I'm of gonna give him... Go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna give him my um, my cloak from like what I was wearing before we changed into court clothes, and suggest okay. that he and suggest that he doesn't take anything because she's gonna come down here in a, in a minute. And she might notice that something's missing. Let yeah. pause with the hand uh, just like a meter from the mannequins. Perhaps you're right, friend. I, I would be extremely grateful. And uh, accepting it, getting a bit of modesty going, uh, he will sneak over to the hatch and kind of begin to lower himself down, uh, giving a final goodbye. If there's anything else, uh, you can... Put it to him now, otherwise he's going to slip away into the mist. All right, and yeah, Calvin. So careful. you walk. Yeah, he will nod back to you, and uh, one more thanks before disappearing. And uh, so your friend in the background, you probably maybe hear a couple of um, confused or disgusted uh, sounds as he has entered Babylon's taxidermy workshop. <laughs> Neat. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the wants first to thing you see out. is this. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, sorry. I, I, the first thing you see is the horse's head, leering at you with glossy eyes, kind of lips peeled back, yellow teeth, and it's affixed to some kind of eight limbed armature made of wicker and wire. It's kind of made to face the doorway, you get the idea. But there's lots of other horrifying amalgamations all over the place. Oh. Delvin just kind of hops around a little bit, um, looking for, I don't know, uh, I think he'd look for, like, uh, he, he keeps remembering the hat, uh, out on the, on the mannequins, so he's kind of like, there's a lot of, what, a lot of, like, trinkety stuff or whatever looking around here, so he might try to find... Uh, something small just to kind of, I don't know, just kind of pocket for the minute or just like, <laughs> you know. Sure. Kinda Give like me any a, kind of check, perception, yeah, investigation. Sure. <coughs> That's not terrible. 13. 13? Yeah, not so bad. So... Yeah, I mean, it's uh, not a nice place to be. Kind of flies constantly buzzing around. Uh, you have to swat them away, always landing on you. And you see an assortment of tools, saws, knives, scrapers, hand cranked drills, yes. sewing threads, needles, things like that. Uh, yeah, it's not pretty. And uh, a shelf on the verge of collapsing uh, holds the weight of dozens of stuffed horrors. Um, let's see. Although looking around... 
And with the 13, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to... You are a fake creature, so you might have a bit of a, a more innate knowledge of what's a trinket and what's just a piece of rubbish, because sometimes it is quite hard to tell. Um, yeah. But you do manage to find what looks to be a large tooth. You would guess something like from an ogre. It looks to have been cleaned up and uh, smoothed off and shined, and it's got an elvish glyph on it. Uh, do you speak elven or elvish, sylvan, anything like that? Uh, sylvan. All right, uh, enough to recognize the word for moon uh, etched onto it. Okay, yeah. Uh, Calvin will kind of pick it up and say, well, this will make a nice necklace. And he'll pocket the, he said, ogre tooth. Correct. Okay. Just kind of hold his breath and flot some swies around and say... I wouldn't go in there if I were you. It's kind of rank. And just exit back out. Fair enough. Just catching a whiff of the door opening, Sydney will just kind of like brush away, try and brush away the odor from his face. <laughs> yeah, the whole place here is just... Uh, you, you get what that undercurrent was. It's like uh, the smell of parts, creature parts, just kind of suffused into the wood. Uh, you don't think the stains are ever going to come out of the floor. Um, but for now, uh, Granny, not Granny, um, Bavlona, uh, Bavlona Blightstraw gave you more than one task. You had, uh, I believe she asked you as well to pick up a new case of taxidermy subjects uh, on the southern side of town. Yeah, because, um, who she sent before hadn't returned, right? Uh, something like that, yes. That sounds about right. And uh, she also... Uh, what was it? So it was... You get, did you give her the book already, last session? Yeah, we did. Oh. That was from the Bullywogs, I believe, right? Yeah, that was one of the things. So it was the book, the pool, and the crate. Uh, once you did these three chores for her, then she would... Um, sit down and talk with you about your problems. Well, if you want to... We can either go and tell her about the the water being cleared or not tell her about it and go get the book or the people or the supplies. Yeah, supplies. I said we just go get the supplies. No sense in bothering her with every kit task we check off yeah don't think she'd need to run by run a play by play I agree very well so this Roll. means uh, returning to your boat yep as they're about to return uh, before they leave Kelvin just kind of gonna run around quick and look at the hat and just try it on real quick and then put it back just to see if it fits um for later <laughs> perfect yeah so he would just run over look at it and just like grab it off try to stuff stuff it on his head and then see the fit and then put it back as he tries to put it back it does not come off in fact it seems to shrink further and further down his head uh, oh. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is going to use a crush attack and try to swallow your head. That's going to be a 20 to hit for 8 bludgeoning. Uh, you guys, this isn't a nice hat. <laughs> it pulls down over your face. You feel your sight disappear. It covers your mouth. You aren't able to breathe. Uh, the rest of you just see a flailing um, veto. I run over and I try and get the hat off of him. Like I, I got, I got you here. I got through to the Kelvin. Give me a strength athletics check. Strength. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't tell me the hat overtakes me too. So uh, it is uh, thankfully not big enough for that. Uh, is anyone here wearing a hat? Just out of curiosity. Well, I w well, 
uh, I was technically wearing that helmet. However, uh, I hadn't said it in a few sessions, so I'll say no. It's uh, no, but it looks like it's looking for a place to rest. And uh, if you took off your helmet to try on the hat, you know, that was the best spot. So, as yeah. you're pulling off Sydney, just kind of unable to really make much progress, uh, this creature is pulsing. And uh, I mean, you can hear it sounds like it's got a beak on the inside, it doesn't sound very pleasant. Oof, uh, can Kelvin just try to? You can give me a strength check too. Yeah. Athletics, yeah, if you'd like to try. Essentially just try to bunny bolt. Fifteen. That'll do it. With this like a horrible sucking sound. Uh, the hat comes off and you see it's like trying desperately to get back onto his head. Um, are you like holding it at arm's length? What are you doing? Uh, kind of rushing back and putting it on the mannequin and like standing back with my uh, with my hands up, like, I didn't touch it, <laughs> I didn't do it, and just kind of like backs away. It immediately quietens on the mannequin again, turns back into a scrappy looking witch's hat. Oh, nuts. Sorry, guys. The same would have looked good on you, too, Kelvin. I thought so, but I mean, it's hard to breathe when hats like that are on. So maybe not. <laughs> Good thing you stopped the Sato. <laughs> so, uh, back to the boat still, hey? Yes. Back into there the goes my downfall. outfit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make sure to put my, uh, my vestments back on. My royal attire. As befitting a member of the Saki court, and uh, are you heading to the southern dock, which you uh, left from at one point earlier? You get the idea that's probably the only place to comfortably go. Okay. Can I use shape water to uh, change the color of the water to ick and filth still? Change it to what, sorry? Can I change the color of the water to ick and filth the way it was before we cleaned it? Just to look that way. <laughs> if if you really want to, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, remnants of the ooze. I mean, you can see it's like the creature's busy dissolving. So, um, but now it is still a bit chunky. The water. And as you guys head back down the rickety walkways, you can hear the uh, the swamp ambience all around. Uh, you can hear to the north what looks like a bit of arguing uh, or kind of heated debate coming from the King's Pagoda. Uh, but your objective lies to the south. Uh, so you guys boarding your boats and heading off? Yes. <coughs> I imagine to the eastern dock over here. Now, it doesn't take too long. Uh, you can see there are uh, two bullywugs that are busy pulling off from the dock as you arrive. Uh, they would uh, nod to you. Evening. Evening. In a cordial manner. Um, continuing with their uh, pushing off. They don't seem too interested in conversation. Uh, are you guys just pushing off, uh, moving south along the path? Or what's your plan here? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> Okay, so it takes you back past the saddened uh, sad, um, soul uh, music player whose heart resides in Babylonus Frieza, uh, past one of the first houses. Now, uh, you were kind of told the southernmost house. So easy enough to locate, uh, which would take you across the bridge once more and uh, past this uh, house of whispering uh, bullywugs and uh, you can hear kind of as your footsteps creak along the bridge the door opens somewhat and you see like a, a beady frog eye staring at uh, the group as it passes from the darkness Let's see swamp ambience there we go uh, but you eventually do come to uh, the southernmost house i think you guys interacted with this one before even on your way in I think so. Sure. 
one with the the frantic frantic bullywog. Uh, yes, uh, it looks like Babylonia's pet giant toad um, is uh, being taken care of here, and uh, not the easiest creature to look after. So, I, I, who's taking the lead, knocking on the door? What's the approach here? I guess I'll go ahead and knock. Doesn't take too long for a door to open. You can hear a lot of movement inside. And when the door opens, though, it's kind of pretty still. Uh, just a very beleaguered looking bullywog sticking his head out. Uh, yeah, yes. Came here for um, Bavlona, right? Bavlona's a taxidermy subject. Yeah, taxidermy. Yeah, I'll explain to him, like, yeah, we're here. We're here to fetch some things for Bablona for her uh, taxidermy. Uh, he, he got like a look of horror come onto his face. Uh, I see. Um, and uh, there's like a sound from inside, and it kind of lifts up. Problem is, uh, he's like holding onto the door, uh, struggling to uh, keep a grip. Um, but busy right now and loses his grip you see him close the door as he gets pulled into the building you can hear muffled shouts from help from inside we go in and help him yeah okay let's get rid of this door well stepping inside you can see kind of a Pretty regular uh, reed hut here. Lots of uh, places to sit and kind of storage up against the walls using shelves and stuff. And you can see the feet of the frog, of the um, the um, bullywug sticking out of the mouth of a giant toad uh, who's just very nonchalantly swallowing him. I'll, get in, I'll go ahead and try and pull him out. Sure. Yeah, give me athletics. Thanks, oh, thanks. yeah, that's... That from earlier still. Yeah, give me another athletics. Oh, I'm on fire today, guys. <laughs> uh, with that, uh, you see the toad finish swallowing completely. And you can hear this like... <laughs> from inside. Uh, he's in there somewhere. And Toad looks up at you, blinks kind of one eye, then the other out of sequence, uh, and then goes ahead and regurgitates the entire bullywug, kind of sliding into a wet saliva puddle onto the floor. He just stares up at you. Uh, I, I hate eat the frog. Gets to his feet. This damn thing. Go off with you. And kind of um, shoes it off into the corner, kind of sitting there just watching sorry you said taxidermy uh, there were some animal skins dropped off earlier he starts to kind of rummage against the side wall and uh, you can see a variety of very random stuff and are probably collected from uh, all around uh, what's hither is the name of the swamp and, uh, I think this is the one yes that's it um, kind of peels open the lid just to double check <clears throat> your flies buzzing out and you can see a variety of creatures uh you see what looks uncomfortably close to a heron gun um you see like a fairy dragon a couple of uh, other uh, like like a satyr a couple of toads things like that oh that uh Pavlona likes to diversify and uh, keep herself busy. See, he grimaces. I don't know the half of it. I'm stuck here, at least nothing goes wrong worse than being swallowed by this. Uh, swings a kick at the toad, uh, which can, <laughs> doesn't even bother to move off the way, she barely feels it. <laughs> Uh, but uh, easy enough to... It seems like a fairly mundane task that she gave you here. Um, 
just kind of a chore list fairly uh, easy enough to complete you do manage to it it's going to take two of you to carry uh, but this large crate of uh, gross animal parts yeah i'll give a hand sure and uh let's see here passive perception it looks like sydney's got a 19 passive perception is that right uh, you get back Observant here. Feet. You actually do hear a. Uh, you do hear a fire, uh, just coming to the north. It sounds like it's outside, uh, just beyond this house to the north here, uh, and you do remember kind of seeing some kind of strange, large, iron cauldron-like um, setup on the edge of the water, uh, on the top of the cliff face where you are here. Uh, just to the north. Is that a fire? Sounds like it. We'll check it out. Maybe someone's we'll in trouble. This. Easy enough to head in that direction. You quickly come across uh, the source of the smoke. Uh, or the crackling and the, the smell. There's a bulbous green black cauldron with a thick lid that sits atop a bed of hot coals here. There are uh, there's a couple of sturdy iron legs that protrude from its curved bottom, uh, kind of like the extremities of a crab. You can see on, on each side. Uh, but a wooden ladle hangs from uh, what looks to be like a, a vine lanyard looped around the lid's knob. It's like they're cooking something. Do we still hear... Uh, what else do we hear? Do we hear anything else um, from it? From this, exactly? Uh, there would be... Strange murmurs and kind of titters. Um, almost as if little creatures are playing around it. You don't see anything? Give me a perception check. Fifteen. Fifteen. Nice, nice, nice. Um, it takes a moment to kind of pick out what you're looking at, kind of studying it for a while. Uh, you realize it's the flames themselves as uh, one of the flames kind of disattaches itself from the rest of them. You see it roll out as a creature that looks something like this. Very small. Uh, looks up and uh, gives a shout and then like, kind of dives running back under the cauldron. You're a neat creature. Hello, I'm Kelvin. You can see just like one eye and then another one open up. Uh, there's this long kind of snake-like red tongue that blows a raspberry at you. <laughs> oh, that's not very nice. Hey, what you cooking? What did you like to know? I would. You hear there's a bunch of laughing from uh, other friends around. And it's you can hear another one you went in and you give us some food some food uh, does he have any I have some rations super tasty well, he blows his uh, tongue again at that he does not want <laughs> rations <laughs> Can I take uh, two torches and some kindling? And I'll do that. That would be greatly accepted. Yep. Um, and that, <laughs> you guys didn't happen to buy the bundle of dry wood from the Darklings earlier, That's did you? No. Because that's really what they were. <laughs> um, I don't think we did. No. No, I don't think anyone has in the history of this module. <laughs> uh, but as you throw in the, the, the wooden shrapnel, uh, you can hear it crackle, burn, come to life as the, the fire engulfs it, making appreciative sounds of uh, a fine meal 
uh, you will see kind of a couple of these fat creatures. It's kind of easier to pick them out the longer you talk to them. Now there's like, it looks like there's about eight of them that are uh, all sitting back to the bottom, back to the bottom of the cauldron, a uh, little swollen belly, bellies from eating all the food. Um, and they will, <laughs> if you want in, <clears throat> kind of almost falling asleep in um, post-meal bliss, password is spittle spew. Spittle spew? Say out loud. See if like, anything happens. In the lid uh, kind of unlatches the lid of the cauldron itself. Oh. And Kelvin will just kind of walk up and peek in. You see a bubbling, frothy, gray black liquid. <sighs> the. Does Kelvin feel heat coming from inside the cauldron? I know it's probably hot oh, yeah. outside, These... but... It is cooking, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, not... It's not boiling, but it is steaming. Yeah. Does it? How does it smell? Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to walk up to it and <laughs> give it, like, hang it like a whiff. Unpleasant. Uh, it kind of smells electric. You can you know, feel almost like... Uh, charge running and jumping across the hairs in your nostrils. It is um, it is rather unpleasant. You are welcome to give me any kind of check to analyze it. You would like investigation, arcana, uh, probably the uh, most. I'm gonna go ahead and arcana check that. Alrighty. Decent. Oh, very nice. Uh, so. With that, you do kind of get the the slightest. There, there's definitely uh, some weave mm. that's been cooked into this liquid. Um, you're you would you don't know exactly what it does, but you would guess. Uh, let's just double check here. You would guess that uh, it feels kind of transmutationy. I want to taste it. <laughs> Sydney's curious. He, he he's never really smelled anything that smells like energy or electricity. It does smell a bit foul, <laughs> but he's curious. Okay, uh, give me a wisdom saving throw, uh, or if you are willing, you can choose to fail the save. Mm. So if you pass the save, nothing will really happen. I would like. Now, to I'll, I'll, I'll... Uh, what's that? Are you also trying some? I'd like to try to fill a water skin. Okay. Yeah, there's a ladle. Uh, you can do that easy enough. Um, I'll go ahead and pass the save. And again, uh, well, I mean, if, if if you want to try and pass this, you can't automatically pass, but you can choose to fail. So if you yeah, want that's to try what and I'm resist at, I'm whatever... At... Okay, yeah, I'm not sure. trying to resist then... anything. Roll me a, a d4. Uh, uh, d4. No. Go away. Oh. What did you get? Oh, what are you doing? My d4 came up one, uh, two. Whoa. What is that? Yeah, it, it kept clicking things. I was trying to get rid of them <laughs> here. No problem. So, two. Uh, all right. Uh, you see your friend squat down to the ground. You see their limbs kind of merge into their body. Uh, and before your very eyes, they turn into a giant frog. Just this as uh, Sydney blinks at you guys. I'll hop up and down. <laughs> Just kind of riveting like I'm trying to talk to them. You hear the magnums all kind of laughing hysterically. This is rather funny to them. So you're not like the giant toad. You are just like a regular marsh frog that is now like the size of like a fairly large dog. But uh, the world is strange from here. Uh, the swamp tastes different. Um, it's, it's a clean taste, actually. Uh, you quite like it. You're going to see a couple of interesting insects buzzing around.
Did the rest Cindy? of you see this happen? Yeah. Where'd you go? Sydney! <laughs> I'll hop up, hop up and down in front of Kelvin, like start riveting, like trying to get his attention. Get out of here, frog. We're looking for Sydney. <laughs> I'll hop up and down more frantically. <laughs> so, the thing is, though, with Polymorph, you take on the intelligence of the creature. Uh, so your intelligence is two at the moment. Oh. <laughs> well, standing yeah, next to him and seeing what happens, uh, I'm going to fill that ladle full of liquid, and I'm going to hold it out over the side of the pot, and I'm going to dump it out um, so that okay. some of it as it hits the ground, some of it splashes into the fire. And I'm going to be like, okay, you've had your fun. Uh, how do we undo what's been done? And I'll fill up the ladle one more time and just hold it over. Threatening to like extinguish them if they don't assess or give information. Yeah, you see the fire all kind of skirt to one side, avoiding the wet areas. As they they all hiss at you simultaneously. Where is that? Well, we did not force you to drink. Is his granny's? Uh, not sorry, uh, Bavlonis. We know not. I'll take another torch out and stick it in. Up, like angrily, but give it to them. Okay. Grumbly, frog. grumbling, uh, but they uh, resume their positions here. Well, we have to go see her anyway, right? I think we could probably put I... this, this bag of taxidermy stuff on on the back of this frog. And they can carry it for us. <laughs> kind of a win-win. <laughs> I croak in agreement. <laughs> if I can even really understand what they're talking about. No. It's probably just random croaks at this point. Kelvin is yeah, going to try much. to attach, to lash the, the bag on the back of the frog. It's cumbersome for the frog, but uh, <laughs> you can do it if you like, yeah? <laughs> yep. Do that and then have a, a bit of a lead uh, to kind of tear him along a little bit. Perfect. Come the, on, uh, Frog. King had, the king had a magistrate, like a, a wizard, right? You don't know. Uh, nothing indicated that. It just looked like courtiers. Okay. I didn't know if one of them stood out as, as like a wizard, wizard or not. Thought the guy that handed us the book was okay. Um, yeah, then I guess we have no other option. All right, well, uh, in that case, moving back along the walkways, it's uh, pretty easy enough, but with this kind of popping, wet, splotching sound, and dragging of a uh, sack of animals coming from this giant frog that's uh, laboring uh, to keep up with you guys. You eventually do make it back to the boat. And uh, returning to Granny's cottage. I mean, the trip is one of minutes to uh, gently uh, push up against the walkway under a house and uh, move back into the smell of decay and mess. Are you, uh, what's the plan from here? Are you heading up to the third floor? Yeah, I think so. I'm really close to being able to get my beautiful time to restart. Um, and I feel like this is going to be kind of... Sorry? I'm, my computer has been kind of a pain in the ass for this past like half hour um oh. i'm trying to restart it so that i can have the map now that we're back here it's already oh, no restarted worries. i'm just firing up roll 20. all right and wait a moment or two there's no rush okay Oh, 
was there stairs or was there an elevator? Is a spiral uh, staircase? Yeah. On the top of that spiral staircase that heads uh, up to the second floor. And then stairs in the lounge that uh, head up to the third. Let's see that red cap recognize me now. <laughs> yeah, you look like uh, something you could store in the freezer now. Oh, yeah, I definitely want to stay away. I don't want to be a meal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kelvin will just lead um, the frog with the bundle up the stairs. And I'll bring up the rear just in case it uh, crates or bag starts to slide. Well, uh, you can leave the goods in the taxidermy room. You get the idea. Oh, okay. You yeah, don't we'll need do to take that to her personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still leave uh, the well, heading rock back up with us. Uh, pushing up into the second floor, uh, you step up in the passageway of um, sad, scowling faces and uh, into the room where you first saw Bavlona for the first time and uh, up the stairs. You guys ready to go? Yep. So, uh, nice. As uh, you start to take uh, stair by stair, uh, you can kind of feel the you can feel the air get a bit uh, colder as uh, you head up into Bavlona's private area here. Let's get you up uh, to the right place. Here we go. Uh, so you find yourself in a very discordant room like everything else there's kind of a light about on the roof that darts around uh bobbing here and there as soon as you guys lift your heads into the area kind of drops down to hover uh just above you all uh, you see a very unpleasant creature but you've seen Bafflona before she's still got this <laughs> disgusting appearance uh the kind of cracked skin uh, she hasn't bathed in a very long time and it's seemingly taking an effect on her body as you head up uh, she's in the process of kind of peeling off like flakes of the skin and uh, throwing them back into the into her gaping throat uh, but can she I stops be, look yes can, can i be in the shrinking hallway on the second floor if you'd like to be sure yeah i'm gonna be tucked away for a minute okay uh, so that means Moon Moon, are you just poking your head up to tell her the job's done, or what's the plan? No, I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let. Um, she yeah, hasn't I seen me yet. To... Yeah, no, you're but... right. Wrong person. Yeah, Calvin, then what are you doing? Calvin, all kind of just like walk up, not even like peeking or anything. Just walk up. And, Hi. Just wave at her. <laughs> what? Uh, we, we got your taxidermy stuff. Um, it's downstairs. And then, uh, we found out what was wrong with your pool. There was like this jelly creature that was stuck. Uh, and we got it out and your pool's back to normal. You see a burst of motion as she pulls herself out of the bed. Uh, moving pretty quickly, it uh, surprises you. <laughs> Good job. Now, boy, I need to bathe. And as she does, like like cockroaches from under the bed, lots of these little lawnlings just crawling out in every direction, little copies of her, uh, as they follow scampering after her down the stairs. You just like <laughs> big thundering as uh, she goes down to the first floor and a splash of water. Uh, so she says as she's leaving um she's basically going to take a short rest in the pool and then she will have a discussion with you guys okay it's up to you if you want to kind of um just sit around listening to elevator music uh, or what's the plan until she's ready uh what looks like arm wants or... that book right 
Harm wants whatever it is, the helmet from her. Oh, sorry, I couldn't catch that? The Harm or whatever her name was wanted that helmet from Barvuna, didn't she? Yeah, Did Moon Moon tell us about fine. that? Yes. I don't think I would have said what it was, but I, I did tell you that um, when we cleared the pool, that my intention was to get her to go take a bath and then me sneak up into the room. Well, it seems Looking like the stars have aligned. In this room, what, what do we see? Is there any creatures or anything left in there? So, uh, there's a bed occupying one of the corners. It's a, basically a pile of straw uh, in place of a mattress. There's a chest of drawers with the watering can resting atop it. Uh, the only other furnishing of note is a stocky wooden chest in the bottom right of the room with a sturdy iron padlock. And it sits between two closed doors. Uh, you can also see these rumpled and uh, moldering um, just it fits the rest of the house pretty much but uh, besides all the stacks of dirty dishes and food scraps there are four tipped over clay pots whose plants uh, look like they have long since died um, every now and again you see them give like a twitch or a shudder and that's effectively what you see here Elvin's gonna tie off the toad on the one of the railings and uh, kind of walk back down. What is that thing moving? Just a ball of light that's kind of bobbing around the room. Can Kelvin tell if it's like uh, conscious? Like uh, you would recognize this as a will as a will o wisp. Okay. Uh, Kelvin will stick his head back down and say, "Moon, moon." Moon Moon. I'll I'll come out and you'll see my head poke around the banister at the end of the stairs. She took a bath. You wanted to look around? Can I go ahead and send my uh badger up? <laughs> uh you're sure? Sure. Um the badger remind me where that comes from again? Uh, is, the it familiar? Bag of is it familiar? Is it Okay. Um, so, I mean, you're going to be tiny compared to that now. So you're sending. What do well, you? Well, I didn't go through the hallway. I just hid in the in the alcove, oh, okay. basically. I see. I see. So, so what's the badger past? doing? Um, I'm going to have him do a once over of the room, just looking to see if there's any more of those small creatures. The lonelings. Uh, you are welcome to give me a perception check. Does it have keen smell or anything like that? Uh, yes, it does. Alrighty. Advantage on perception. I really pity the creature then in this environment, but let's get that check. <laughs> Is that disadvantage then? <laughs> uh, 22 and... Nice. The room is clean. Uh, there is something strange. It does smell one of these creatures from the other side of this door. But uh, it, it, from what you can gather, it thinks it's dead. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to roll. I'm going to eat the... Uh... Shit. Yeah, I'll just roll stuff. Thirteen, and come upstairs. Okay. Uh, one of the let's see here, you can see kind of one or two lawnlings in the um, the tea room, uh, but you manage to quickly sneak over to the stairs when they have their backs turned, and yeah, you you get up here without being seen. So okay. what are you looking for? Doing a once over in the room, just looking through the room. It's probably beyond that door, right? What are we looking like for? There isn't 
It's some kind of helmet. It's a like this or an item. And Kelvin will hold up the elvish helmet that he has. I'm not really sure. I didn't get a good description of it, but so something like it. Okay, cool. Do you want to? It looks like there's locks on that door. Uh, any points to the door with the wait? Was there a door with a lock, or was that the cabinet with the lock? It was a chest with the lock, uh, but this door also does have a keyhole. If yeah. you want to do your you get... your lock stuff, I can kind of look in here. Why you do that? Um, don't like this thing standing here. I'm gonna use a uh, message to talk to Kelvin. Um, I don't like that thing, that orb of light. I think it, it might it's a will o wisp. Uh, just don't touch it. Sydney with his frog-like intelligence is is just watching the will o wisp fly around the room. <laughs> just smacks it with his tongue. <laughs> um, don't do that. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, just be mindful that poking around in here might set it off. It might be like an alarm. Um, or some. I'll be pet. super careful. Um, you know me. Which would be more fun, opening the chest or the door? <laughs> Calvin. Uh, probably the door. Okay. Uh, DM, if I was to be under the influence of invisibility, would lock picking count as uh, a trigger for that? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, then I will go ahead and uh, cast Detect Magic using spell slots. And kind of glance at the door and the chest. Okay, um... There is, uh, the chest does have uh, magic about it. Let me just double check that. Uh, there's a strange, it's kind of, it's suffused with magic, the chest. It's not, um, there is uh, some pinpricks of magic inside the, ob uh, the, the object as well. And uh, you get a kind of a buzz from the room beyond uh, the, the eastern door. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and eat the muffin. And then walk over to the door. Sure. Uh, you see the will was kind of... It generally seems to stick in an area around um, the people who are kind of moving around in the open, if there is someone. But as you move to the door, yeah? Uh, you want to give us a lockpicking check, or are you doing anything else? Um, I would like to... Uh, take a look at the door and with the detect magic are there any like ruins or or anything there it seems pretty mundane uh, from what you can tell uh, your detect magic isn't picking up anything it just seems like a physical lock okay um So I rolled an eight for sleight of hand. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, so unless you've got crazy modifiers on that, it is most likely not going to work. It's a pretty complicated lock from what you can gather. I was kind of hoping I'd have guidance or bless. Um, but the, I just glance over at the frog. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm a frog. Okay. Uh, you're welcome to. So wait, uh, the invisibility. How long was that last again? Uh, I don't know. 
Is it for an hour? Just yeah, I was here. thinking it was an hour. That makes more sense. Don't know why I can't remember suddenly. Uh, up to an hour. Okay, yeah, sure, that's fine. So uh, you would be able to reattempt the uh, challenge, but it would take uh, a bit of time. You're looking at about uh, spending about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, I'll spend that time looking at the lock and then kind of inspecting it. Around this time, the effects start to wear off, and uh, where the frog was, you now see a collared Sydney that is uh, tied to the banister. Just sitting around looking, just kind of randomly looking around. Why do I want flies? It's weird taste in your mouth. <laughs> And what's with, what's with this collar? <laughs> uh, we're playing a game, and Kelvin just goes and unties him. <laughs> so, if she was taking a short rest, uh, according to the typical kind of D and D rules, uh, we you could expect to have about fifty minutes uh, of time while she's down there. While Moon What's Moon's the plan? looking at the door, Kelvin's just gonna kind of just walk around the room. Uh, what he can look in, he'll look in um, under the, the little table in the corner, kind of glance underneath it, or just kind of look around for something that kind of looks like his elvish helmet or not or something, I guess. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so there's a really chest specific. of drawers. Mm -hmm. uh, there's kind of just dirty plates and all kinds of trash. The, uh, the only other objects really here, the bed, the chest, the uh, dying plants, the chest of drawers, and the, and the, the green watering can. Uh, besides that, you don't see any kind of helmets or anything that looks like it. It might be in the chest. Uh, or it could fit in the chest of drawers. The chest of drawers are not locked. And as you kind of open it, it seems to contain dresses, other garments. So you, some of them look like they've never been worn. Some of them look like they're covered in marsh slime. Um, it is pretty disgusting. Mm. She probably should have bathed with these on. <laughs> okay. I'm going to... I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Kevin was just going to stop looking and just wait for Moon Moon to do what they were doing. I'm going to use message to talk to uh, Sid. I'm going to tell him that I'm going to grab his arm. And then I'm going to grab his arm. I'm going to ask that he cast, uh, that he, he blesses us for uh, guidance. I think it's All actually guidance for skill checks. Yeah. Yeah. Blesses for attacks and saving throws. So yeah, I'll, I'll give, him, give, a, give him a shake of my uh, a nod of agreement and I'll, I'll kind of put my hand around his wrist and then cast guidance on him. Okay. And then I will walk back over to the door a little more confident this time. <laughs> While he's doing that, I want to look around and see if maybe I can't find a key. You are welcome to try. You can give me any kind of check that you'd like to make, um, most likely perception or investigation, anything like that. Uh, here, I'll paste the description of the room as well for you to reference in chat if you would like. Come on. Not bad. All right, 15 perception. Uh, you're looking specifically for a key. Uh, yeah, I mean... that would go to the chest of the door. Of course, yeah. Uh, not not obviously in the open. You start to look in places underneath things, around, behind, uh, in the drawers. You'd have to kind of go through some of the clothes. It's, um, most of it is pretty molded. And nothing stands out at you. Nothing jumps out, unfortunately. You do not find a key. So I'm not sure if it's studying the lock for 15 minutes or if it's the guidance and my confidence, but I did roll it in that 20 plus 7 plus 2. <laughs> Very good. Okay. The lock well, just destroys with... itself. <laughs> the door clicks open. Uh, 
Um, okay. Uh, walking in, what do I, what do I see in the room? So, opening the door, stepping inside the room. Uh, it's a must. It's a musty room. It looks like uh, some kind of um, old hoarder's attic. Uh, you can see lying in tall heaps, discarded blankets, quilts, cushions, clothing of all shapes and sizes, uh, not to mention musical instruments, toys, dolls, jewelry boxes, flower vases, child-sized caskets, uh, and broken furniture. But you do see among the heap of junk quite a few oddities. There's a stag skull hanging on one wall, a white porcelain jar with chicken legs standing on a table, a fancy helmet placed on the faceless head of a wooden mannequin, and a five-foot-long bronze statue of a giant frog squatting in a corner with its mouth agape. But uh, where you would expect the inside of the statue to be lies nothing but a void of impenetrable darkness. And as you're looking around, a weak croaking sound calls your attention nearby to a tiny shriveled figure lying on the floor uh, you see one of these lawn links as it lets out a final small gasp before dying I'll paste that in chat as well Uh, you guys can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. What's what's uh, the plan? This does seem to be kind of the hoarding room. I'm gonna roll a medicine check and scoop up the the creature. So yeah, Sydney is whispering his rolls to me. Let me change that quick, and then I think uh, Moon Moon's doing it, it? Uh, privately. As soon as Are roll twenty rolling... actually fires up, it should. It should no communicate. Are you, Sydney, yeah, are you running from D&D Beyond? Yeah, I'm using D&D Beyond. You should try and check your settings there, because you're always bring them to me. I'd rather have them out loud for people. Okay, um... Red, I don't use D&D Beyond, so I can't assist too much with that. Yeah, somebody could, because I don't even know how that would have gotten changed. I, I literally just opened it, and it's kind of... Uh, any of you two know how to access the whisper settings in the Indie Beyond? Press, press and hold on any roll. You'll get a small pop-up that has six options. Roll to everyone, roll to stealth, roll to dungeon master, advantage, flat roll, disadvantage. Make sure everyone and flat roll are checked. Um, did press and hold on any roll? Yep. Or right click For on instance, it. your perception. On a PC? Because right click, I'm clicking right click on any roll. Oh, right click. Yeah, right. Okay, click. yeah. Send to everyone in flat or both toggled. Okay. Well, click click everyone at once more. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a real quick roll. See if it. No, it's still whispering. That's so weird. It's bizarre. Okay, well, I mean, we don't have to. I will call out all your roles as well. Don't have to stop. We'll hopefully figure it out. Uh, we can maybe take a look at during the break as well. Yeah. But for now, as you guys, uh, the door is open. As the door opened, you do see the will o' wisp stop, freeze. And kind of you feel its attention kind of shift to the door but uh, as the door slides open and shuts with your invisible friends slipping in it doesn't seem to react and continues its passage around the room <laughs> well Moon Moon what's, what are you doing in here uh, the first thing I wanted to do was uh, pick up and uh, roll a medicine check on the, the little gremlin thing. Go for it. Okay. Um, nice. Uh, 16. 
Uh, 16. Uh, the creature, I mean, it's pretty disgusting just to touch it. Um, being like the replica of Babylonia, um, people these kind of, kind of conflicting feelings. But you do see aspects of it that look even more disgusting than the original Babylonia does. Uh, kind of as if the veins were blackened and uh, ruptured, lifting up above the skin. Um, 16, you would attribute this to necrotic damage. Okay. There we go. I'm back in now. Um, so you said the frog statue has its mouth open, there's a void. Um, Correct. You said there's some kind of mannequin up here in the north? Uh, correct, yeah, with a uh, helmet on it. The helmet looks, it doesn't look like any kind of elven helmet or anything like that. It looks very strange. It's got all these, it kind of looks like a brain if you had to attribute something to it. Okay. Um, do I have a potion? I do not. Um, I'm going to slide the body underneath the door <laughs> of the right. someone and use message and uh, tell Sid to heal it if he, if you, if he cares to. Um, but it to has, careful. it has passed. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to stand here and use mage hand to try to, I can't ping now. Well, I'm going to stand where its body was then and use Mage Hand to grab the helmet. The helmet does come free of the mannequin. Okay. I'll go ahead and try to wrap it up and uh, put it away. Very well. Yeah, you do so. Does Detect Magic pick up anything else in here? Oh, you got Detect Magic up, yeah. So the helmet, uh, the porcelain jar, the stag skull um, would have the kind of strange, almost like after afterglow of magic. Uh, the bronze statue, the bronze statue would definitely, the um, the void that fills its mouth would be magical. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll take a single coin and, and kind of throw it in the frog's mouth from like 10 feet away. Vanishes into the darkness. Um, you don't hear anything. It, that's it. Okay, thoroughly creeped out. I'll just um, try to open the door. Yeah, slide out and close the door behind me. Okay. All right, you can see your friends anxiously waiting at the top of the stairs, or, I mean, if you guys are doing something else in the meantime, you're welcome to uh, say so. You would kind of hear scampering as well, and you would see a couple of lawnlings start to make their way up the staircase back into the room as well. Uh, with my foot, I'll kick the body back underneath the door. Nice. <laughs> uh, I'll use a okay, message so... and tell okay. both of them that I think I've got what we came for. All the way? Yeah. We got all the way down to where Babylon is resting? Uh... I don't know. Uh, so should we just chill in the uh, the lounge area until she's done bathing? Because yeah, we did fine. get in there and get what we needed to do. I mean, my main goal with talking with her was to return you back to your form, but I guess that you're back now. There's no need until yeah, she's done. Yeah, it just kind of wore off. <laughs> do you let them know, uh, Moon Moon, that you got a strange helmet? Yeah, I, I would have messaged both of them that I was coming out so that they could have been prepared for the All right. Spirit. 
So, I mean, you guys are welcome to just uh, while away the time until uh, everyone finishes her rest and a discussion can be had. That's, that's perfectly fine as well. Um... What if she notices that we took that? Yeah. Also, the door is still unlocked. Could I roll slide a handle like... on it? Yeah, you can. Uh, 25. Alright, yeah, you got it. Alright, so you guys want to wait? Yeah. I'm not going to be invisible for much longer, and I have the helmet, and... I'm also going to be an unfamiliar base, so... Why don't you just leave? Go down the shrinking hallway. <laughs> um, you just go outside and wait? <laughs> yeah, I'm contemplating... Uh, climbing down the outside stairs. The outside stairs just go back down to the first level. The only way down to the boat uh, without kind of jumping would, or climbing is the hatch. I would probably follow him because I'd be an unfamiliar face too. Because the first time encounter, I was microscopic, like rat-sized. And the second time I encountered Barbalona, I was a frog. I mean, we can explain the frog thing. We can't explain an yeah. invisible dude turning not invisible. Very true. So I'll take the outside stairs and be waiting outside the the uh, bathing room. Okay. It's this little area here, just kind of a uh, cramped little uh, outer staircase, looking out over the uh, over the the swamp. You can hear the cries of the bullywugs in the distance. Um, all right, yeah, doable. Here we go. Uh, as for the rest of you, eventually uh, you hear a slopping, splashing, a very wet Bavlona uh, slapping her way up the stairs into the lounge. Um, I feel alive again. Oh, much better. It's like with a squelch sinking down into the now very wet chair. Um, are you kind of waiting in the room, Kelvin? Yeah, just sitting in the chair across from her, just waiting, kicking his feet, and uh, as soon as she walks in, she'll say, Actually, uh, I had a friend that kind of got turned into a toad, but it kind of wore off, so this is, uh, this is Sydney. Uh, I was coming to you to ask for help, but I don't need your help with that anymore. But you mentioned about yeah. speaking to us after your bath? Which I hope was good. I said I would listen to your pleas. Why did you visit me? Uh... Must have been something that brought you. I've never met someone who came willingly. <laughs> well, we're we're kind of new here. Um, we had some friends who kind of lost some things, and, uh, everything kind of pointed to you. I'm not saying you stole anything, uh, it just looks like you like to keep things. And Kelvin kind of, like, a... as soon as he says that, he kind of, like, grimaces a little bit, like, knowing maybe shouldn't have said it like that, but... <laughs> And a very kind of toad-like smile stretching from one side of her face to the other as um, uh, you see the tongue dart out and kind of moisten the one side of the cheek a little bit. Yeah, yeah we do have a little bargain, but it's all according to the rules, I can assure you. And little nasty children sneak into the carnival without paying. Are you one of those little nasty children? Oh no, I'm not. 
and then Kelvin He's will chuckled. wonder if Sydney is. <laughs> So uh, yes, at this point Sydney, he's kind of Sydney afraid and of Moon. Fair. Uh, so wait, Calvin, are you are you in this conversation alone, or is Sydney there with you? Oh, I thought Sydney was uh, with, no, with her. Oh, yeah. Okay, Sydney's, I'm kind of keeping Sydney's kind of keeping quiet, and so are you. In that case, yes, I can. I can. Ah, I can smell it. <laughs> A disgusting cologne. <laughs> Are you one of them? Have you come to search what you've lost? I, I have. But as she says, as she mentions the smell, Sydney will like start sniffing his armpits. <laughs> uh, deals can always be, um, be made. And of course, you would have to do a little bit of something for me. What do I need to do? Well, wait a minute. We did a few things for you. Already. That is why you have been given this meeting. You want what I have lawfully taken. Got to need something a bit more. My sister, Scabatha. She lives in a hollowed out tree in the forests of thither. I want you to take a picture of her wall and return it to me. A picture of her. It's a. Uh, you'll find a bit of a family shrine. I want that one. Picture of a family sign. Don't see how that can be too hard. It uh, should be in a circular room in the heart of Loom Lurch, her little toy factory. You'll find it alongside the portraits of her other sisters, Mavlona, Endel, and Natasha. You will need a guide, though, to reach thither. I think there was a scarecrow in town that knew the way. Don't recall its name now. Snapperjaw. Right? Something Snapper, like that, yes. Snapperjaw. <laughs> Clap, clap a claw. Clap a claw. Clap a claw. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, though, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We met him. Nice fella. She shrugs. If you bring me this portrait, I will return what you have lost. Then you'll kind of give a thumbs up and like, consider it done. And uh, just a bit of uh, expediting here. You were told when you met Clapperclaw that uh, he, he lost his head. His head was taken and replaced with that of a rattling gourd. Oh. Uh, he said of the hair and yeah. gun bandits did give it to uh, Granny Night uh, Bavlona. Sorry, Granny Nightshade's the second sister. I don't know uh, Bavlona. Um, so, Clapperclaw really can't get around too much um, because he, he's missing his head. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have that so we can give it to him and then he can guide us to your sister and retrieve your portrait. Would you? Well, see her pull off the chair and move to the stairs. Oh, wait. What's moving upstairs? He is like, opens the door. And he hears like scream of anger. Oh, what happened? Who killed it? Uh, you get the idea. Uh, she's found the dead lawnling upstairs. You hear a bit of thrashing. Something smashes. Uh, she, you, you see the uh, stag helm get thrown bodily down the stairs. Kind of slide along, bouncing into the wall as uh, she hurries back downstairs. Eyes bulging, uh, veins throbbing. Uh, just this looming presence that's moves at a unnatural speed up to you. Did you do this? 
holding the small lawn and kind of limply in its hands. Did you kill my baby? No. Uh, I I don't kill anything unless it attacks me, and that's that cute little thing. I don't. I've never seen it before. You see, with kind of the blatant honesty of your um, your words, just deflates somewhat. <gasps> Seeming to lose like a fair couple of inches in height, she sinks back into the chair, collapsing. I'm sorry for your loss. Would you like us to bury it? Uh, she just throws it uh, into the back of her mouth and uh, clamps <laughs> her jaw shut uh, without any comment. Um, she looks around and she points to the skull, though. Take it. Ah, thank you. Calvin will hop over and pick it up. You can tell the frogs that you may take one of the uh, swamp marsh balloons uh, to reach the forests of thither. Swamp marsh balloon. You said to the forest of hither? Uh, thither. Thither. TH. Yeah, yeah, you're in, you're in hither. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, uh, we'll let him know. He'll wave a hand as if to dismiss you. Oh, uh, okay. Um, bye. I'll give a nod and walk out. Come on, Sydney. Off on an adventure. I hope you're having fun. <laughs> it's always a fun time with you around, Kelvin. This way, this way. You guys head back downstairs, uh, imagine kind of through the trap door into the fresh air of the swamp once more, kind of as soon as you step out of the house underneath it, kind of a bit of the pervading you know, um, like evil presence does fade a little bit. You'll see the trap door open and close once more and then I drop visibility. <laughs> Nice. So what's going on? Well, she wants us to get a, a portrait or a picture of a family shrine from one of the sisters to get our stuff back. Okay. But I don't know. It seems a bit easy, and we were told not to trust her in her deals, so... Well, maybe we can make a deal with her sister. Oh, no, that's good thinking. And then, uh, Kelvin will kind of hold up the stag head. Say, we got this. It's for Clapperclaw. Uh, he's supposed to guide us to Thither. And that's where, uh, Pavlona's sister, Scabatha, is. Also, also, we get to fly in one of the marsh balloons. It doesn't that sound like fun. The one Sid fixed earlier? The big one. When I one. started to fix it. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they wouldn't let allow me to keep working on it because we hadn't uh, introduced ourselves to the king yet. But I do believe it may be the one that I was going to help fix. Awesome. I would like to do two things before we leave here. Um, one, we need to go report to the king that the book has been returned and that everything has been kind of overlooked and forgiven. Um, and then two, I'd like to go back to that oddity shop. Well, I think the king is out where we have to go talk to Clapperclaw, and the oddity shop is by the balloon. Yeah, that's about it. Cool. So, uh, you can, you are, uh, members of the soggy court, so not too far to use the royal docking chambers, uh, royal docks effectively uh can i leave you both there heading through the palace with all the relaxing courtiers and uh, nobles room in the pool here uh are you first checking in on the king yeah sure uh, well i mean actually let's say it's easy enough as you look towards the east you can see that the balloon is no longer there it seems to have taken off what so unfortunately the oddity shop has uh, gone with it Oh, that was our ride. 
Okay. But uh, heading back to the king, uh, you will see the same kind of sinking pagoda and uh, the sycophants all around uh, this kind of larger figure, although that's not the same figure you left here. Um, the person that they uh, are fawning over is uh, an, an unknown grung to you. Ah, here they are. The uh, newest members of the soggy court. Welcome back. Tell me, was Pavlona angered about the book? Well, not quite. Uh, happy to get it back, and she thanks you. Yeah, he bows. <laughs> I told you. Uh, all you had to do was listen to uh, Mandel Mud, the knight of the pickled fly, and uh, he won't lead you wrong. You're going to hear some of the courtiers. Hail, hail, hear, hear, Mandel Mud, um, kind of just calling out his praise. Uh, but yeah, there seems to have been a change in leadership. Good luck. They nod to you. Um, you do know where Clapperclaw is. He lies beyond on the bridge. Yep. Is there any reason to stop here? Uh, I don't right. have anything I want to say to the, the froggies. Can I ask, yeah. the, can I ask yes? the gathered royalty um, about the curious shop where it stops? Uh, you would be told that it is a uh, those, those figures work for Endelin, um one of the sisters and they are known to come and go um, so you'll probably find them in one of the other areas of Prismere okay awesome uh, about hey clapper claw right. you found it I imagine you kind of, it's quite a large thing, the the skull. Probably yeah. not something to store it in a bag. Uh, I think Calvin will probably like have tied it like behind his head. So the the antlers <laughs> kind of, you know. It just looks like a whopper <laughs> tinger come down the stairs. Yep. <laughs> nice. Uh, but you can see he's like rattling as he runs over, um, pulling off the gourd. It kind of sways for a moment as if he's lost his balance. Kind of have to write him uh, lest he fall into the water. But uh, like a bit of a blind man clawing in the dark, he reaches for the skull and uh, just pushes it on. Nothing seems to change. It stays there. No eyes show up in the holes or anything like that. But uh, you hear a sigh of relief. <laughs> oh, that's better. Uh, I haven't been myself, really. <sighs> Stupid thing. And he kicks the gourd off into the water, uh, splashes and starts to sink. Now that you I'm have ready your to head go. back, you need... yep. Oh, go ahead. No, he's just saying his uh, services are available. Speaking of, um, we kind of have to get to thither, um, to do a couple errands, and uh, we are pointed in your direction that you could possibly be our guide. Definitely. You've done me such a, a solid service here. Uh, and I wouldn't mind a change from the, the swamps. We would need to gain permission uh, to use one of the swamp balloons. Oh, we have that covered. Wait, who do we have to gain permission from? Uh, Pavlona, so yeah, you would have that covered. Okay, I didn't know if we had to go tell the, the soggy court that we were Taking a balloon because she said we could. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, unless there's anything else you want to do here, he would uh, excitedly run off to start preparing the basket for travel. Um, it is going to be a little bit of a journey, so you can probably expect to be in the air for um, probably up to a day. So any last things you want to finish off here, you have a moment to do so. Any kind of 
Um, you, you, you can stock up on a couple of rations as well. Uh, that will be provided for you. Otherwise, yeah, let me know when you are ready to head off into the sky. Would we be taking a long rest? You you can if you'd prefer to before traveling. Okay. I it's, will You've been going around for quite a while, so it's probably not the worst idea. I will drop the badger. Having it go away. Or turn into a hairball or something. Very well. Elvin will hop into the basket as uh clapper calls getting everything around and try to fall asleep. Nice. I'll ask Kalpakov if I can do anything to help him get set up and just kind of try and help him get everything in order. Yeah, I mean, he'll gladly accept your help. Um, giving you a couple of ideas what he needs to get done. Um, easy enough for you to assist him in that. Uh, and things kind of get expedited. You very quickly gather all the packs you need. Uh, the repairs are done on the cloth on the balloon at least and it is ready to go effectively uh, you start pulling out the what would they be called mooring lines um, tying you down into the swamp itself and uh, kind of have this big ball of uh, fire this burner in the center waiting to go uh, he'll explain there, there used to be free travel between the areas of Prismia. Unfortunately, it's since um, uh, since the disappearance of Zybilna, and since she's taken like a back seat, uh, these strange walls of fog have kind of cut off most people from traveling between the areas. Those few that did work as guides beforehand seem to somehow retain the ability to travel between these areas, though. So he is offering you this service now. See, Calvin said he'll be right back. Can I, while sitting down, use uh, Find Familiar to summon a small bat? Yes, sure. You okay. guys have a lot of time whiling away, spending an evening in the swamp. Um, you hear the strange antics and goings on of the bullywugs, but eventually uh, ready to set off into a new area of Prismia. Uh, the, you can hear the flames roaring to life as the marsh gas balloon lifts into the air's above downfall. Uh, you see a couple of the bullywugs like looking up, watching your uh, trail as you start to go uh, over the swamps. Now, and you can see some of the areas you've visited earlier. It's a beautiful sight. Uh, in the distance, the inn, the end of the road, kind of making its way uh, slowly along the side of the river. The Brigand's Tollway spreading off as this kind of strange um, spiderweb of, of crossways. And you also see this lake, the source of the uh, swamp waters. A large, strange kind of uh, serpentine-like creature just briefly uh, visible to sight before you uh, fly off once more into the air. So, and eventually, uh, this this kind of takes you up into the mountains. You see a lot of plant life and uh, kind of eat, uh, not, not eat, you get eaten by the wall of cloud that uh, seems to have settled on the land of Prismia. Uh, eventually you lose sight of the swamps of Hither, and you're just flying in this whiteness. And you can see the uh, guide kind of paying attention to where he's going. You're not really sure how he's understanding at all where you are. Looking in every direction, it's just this gray, white um, fog. We should... Uh, uh, shouldn't be much longer now. Uh, just you can hear him kind of call back as uh, the environment you're in does deaden the sound somewhat just make sure to uh, and he would have tied you uh, made sure you all kind of tied yourselves down um, in case there was any rough winds or things like that which he does call out for now and you kind of feel the basket begin to vibrate and shake somewhat almost as if uh, yeah the yeah almost as if the uh, the wind itself is lifting the basket and just 
throwing it. Uh, you are tossed this way and that, uh, feeling these taut ropes. And uh, kind of every now and again, you get a sight of the ground below, hundreds of feet. It is uh, rather uncomfortable. And kind of as it gets to its worst, you feel the wind still again. And you push through into uh, another area of Prismia. And you see the forest of the, the open up below you, uh, stretching off into the distance. A much, uh, a much brighter, more colorful place than the swamps you've left behind. Uh, you found that the winds have pushed you quite a bit, and uh, you kind of appear to the south of the mountain range here. Uh, as you hear Clapperclaw uh, call out, I think we're through with the worst of it. Uh, coming out over the um, the forests. We're going to have to put down soon. I think we took a bit of a knocking in that storm and you can see uh, a small, a couple of small tears in the balloon have opened up. A um, bit of the thread has ripped. Um, you're not in worry of instantly plummeting, but you are starting to lose altitude. Hey, Sid. Yeah. I'll point up at the holes and be like. Right when you point at the holes, I'll say, say no more. And I'll kind of clap my hands together and rub them. And I'll start casting mending on the holes. All right. Now, what is the I'm range of mending? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Just see here. It is touch, unfortunately. Oh, okay, so yeah, I can't get to those. So yeah, uh, hoping that you will have enough um, gas to put down without too much problems, you'll see a, a large cave uh, in one of the um, surrounding mountains. And pointing this out, Clapclaw will shout out, uh, this is Nib's cave. And uh, there's a large opening area in front of the uh, cave mouth that it's going to try put down on. Uh, and you are coming down quite hard. Uh, I would like everyone to either give me an athletics or a dexterity... Uh, no, um, strength or a dexterity saving throw, please. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm on fire today. So, yeah, the basket slams into the ground and uh, you feel yourselves all get thrown out and uh, some of you doing a bit better than others Calvin preparing for it uh, kind of sliding out onto his feet you see Sydney rolling across the ground slamming into a tree unfortunately you are going to take a bit of damage there uh, one bludgeoning damage and something a piece of paper that was uh, nailed to the tree uh, floats down and falls onto your face Ooh. what was this I'll read it all right, and oh, before I do that, here is a bit of artwork for if you had stolen the air balloon, uh, but you guys seem to do it peaceably enough. And uh, what you see as you look at the piece of paper, it looks a bit something like this. It's a, it looks to be a wanted poster. Uh, is the picture showing, first of all? Let me just check. I don't even have a map. I keep hitting refresh. Um, no I problem. do not see the picture. I see the hand I... up, but not the picture. It's just like a white, sc white square. Yeah, that's fine. I'm, I'm going to throw it in Discord just because um, I don't know why. Well, 20 has been playing up like this. Uh, whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, there we are. It'll show up in a second. Uh, but what you... Uh, you, you can read it, it does say uh, Wanted Will of the Feywild and underneath it says This sorry wretch has stolen from me. Deliver him to me alive and unharmed and I'll give you back ten years of your youth and it is signed Granny Nightshade I'll, I'll, I'll kind of like wave it up in the air like, hey guys, I found a wanted poster and I'll, I'll kind of scurry over to meet up with them and show it to them. You can see Clap Claw. Oh, not my best landing. Um, sorry, he's just fixing up the... Um, getting the, the balloon as tidied as possible. Is that one in poster for us? No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, that's good. Half expecting to see my face on it. 
uh, once that's confirmed <laughs> that it's not for me. Um, I'll use my uh, Ledger Hand Mage Hand to assist on repairs. Nice. I mean, uh, mostly he's just kind of making sure all the ropes and things are gathered. Uh, he's going to take a breather and maybe take a rest before thinking about repairs. Uh, but as you look uh, towards the cave, uh, well, at least we've made it uh, here. Uh, I'll, I'll introduce you to Nib. Uh, he's, he's he's a nice guy, a bit strange, but who isn't? And uh, this is what it looks like. I'll just put this straight into Discord, uh, seeing as Roll20 is being a bit meh. Um, just kind of this warm looking uh, interior and you can hear kind of uh, a bit of a jingling sound as that kind of something like coins uh, coming from inside. And uh, a warm interior uh, greets you in fact. Uh, Clapperclaw moves off in that direction gesturing for you guys to follow. Do you do so? Yeah. Yeah, I'll follow him. Mm -hmm. Yep. Alrighty. As you do, you can see cozy torchlight radiating from a cave here in the wooded hillside. 20 feet, um, sorry, inside the cave, you see a wizened old man, and uh, he seems to be wearing a blindfold. He's sitting at a spinning wheel, but he is surrounded by piles and piles and piles of gold coins. And uh, as he spins, you can see he reaches down and grasps handfuls of coins and uh, puts them into the loom, feeds them. And as he does, they transform at his touch into golden gleaming fibers that uh, he starts to weave into something else. Then he'll be amazed by this. Hello there. I'm Kelvin. Huh? Who's it? Oh, Calvin, come out of the darkness there. I hear, I hear people. Hey, Nib. You clap a claw. Oh, it's you again. Doing all right? You got my head back. Good, good to hear you. Well, come inside, sit down. Um, close the door, it's letting in some air. Uh, there's no door, you kind of look back. Okay, it's closed. What? What brings you to my cave? Heard of my treasures? Come to take it, have you? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. You're just traveling <laughs> and clapper claws. Uh, we kind, of, we, we kind of crashed a little bit. In a, a balloon. Could we borrow some of that fine thread to fix the balloon? No, this is my thread. You cannot have any. <laughs> and kind of turns quite nasty suddenly. And unless I can make an item for you. Well, I don't normally like gifts, but okay. I like you Kelvin's hear... idea. <laughs> is there any way I don't have use for this money? Is there any way I can give him 10 gold coins just into his hand? You could try. Um, so he's blind, so you'd have to kind of ask him to hold out his hand. Would you tell him what you're giving him, first of all? Yeah. In hearing Kelvin say, hey, can you make us some thread? I'll uh, pull up my coin purse and shake it and uh, say that we'll supply the gold. Please, and please, please no please. more. I don't need any more gold. <laughs> uh, there's enough here. Cursed. I, I cannot leave until it's all gone. I would love a gift. You say gift, Moon Moon. You're going to give us a gift. <laughs> Please, let me, uh, let me make you something. Uh, uh, anything, please. Uh, tell me what you would like. Now, um, he effectively, just so you know what you're dealing with, you can <laughs> okay, roll Okay, give us parameters. <laughs> you can roll on a D8 uh, table if you want to be boring, but uh, any uncommon item, 
he has been cursed. He will tell you, um, I led a cruel and heartless existence, earning these riches by exploiting the misery of my tenants, buying up condemned property, renting it out for an exorbitant fee. Granny Nightshade is helping me, making amends. I told her I want to put my bad deeds behind me and my ill-gotten gains to good use. I've been cursed to dwell forever in this cave, spinning my gold into useful items for anyone who comes my way. But one each! Well... I don't know, that's these weird, angry flashbacks, but yeah. I'm sorry to hear about that. Um, but if you're offering, Kelvin will walk over to him, um, say, I'm gonna take your hand, and then takes his hand and, and runs it across the monocle that he has, and say, I'm a very upstanding bunny. What would go well with this, and he'll move his hand uh, up towards Kelvin's ears, would be a nice top hat. A top hat, sure. And um, are you talking mundane, or is there some magical effect on it? Um, uh, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> All right. And uh, so it can be anything up to uncommon uh, rarity. You're welcome to pick yourself or... Uh, you can also just kind of grab something random. Uh, but he will kind of begin to do this. Once you tell him what it is, it will take him a bit of time, but you guys probably could do a rest after the travel anyway. I'm going to roll a d8 for that, because I don't... I can't... I think of what I don't want to make. Not too familiar with item it. Well, that's fine. Uh, and if, you, if you're feeling on the spot, you're all welcome to save the choice for a later date. Um, yeah, all right, think... but are you happy to roll? Yeah, or I see? rolled a six. Okay. Let's see here. Um, now, Moon Moon, you don't by chance have gloves of thievery already, do you? Uh, no, I do not. As he will uh, give you an ornate pair of gloves. Invisible when worn, help you open doors and pick locks. Uh, I won't judge. Uh, gloves of thievery, uh, which you're welcome to uh, swap out uh, with, some, with one of your party members if they don't really suit you. Okay. Uh, I thank him. Looking oh, over that was, that the... was for Sydney. That was Sydney. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's why. So they might, might not fit Sydney so well. But um, yeah, you're welcome to use them. Uh, they, oh. Yeah. Are you? Thank you kindly. You look wonderful. Sid. Huh? Are you going to keep the gloves? Uh, no. Oh, oh, what's your, uh, gives a sleight of hand, right? You uh, got yes. pretty good sleight of hand. So, yeah, I'll probably end up handing him over to Moon. But, All right. Would oh, you yeah, like to see fine. what what you get, Moon? Maybe something for him? Uh, looking over at Sid and seeing the twig on his belt... Uh, no longer has flowers because it's been a day. Um, I will ask for a stone of luck. Good luck. Sure. Better specify. Do so. <laughs> Dealing with Bay. With my rolls uh, today, I need it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, he will grab up, scooping up handfuls of coin, and uh, yeah, as it changes into what. Uh, it looks like a, it's strange, he's making like a smallish stone. You can see it does retain some of the golden hue from the coins itself. Um, but yeah, a coin, a stone of good luck will go to you. And uh, those of you, it's, it doesn't take very high passive perception. Anyone with a 13 or higher. As he works, you see strange apparitions. Um, kind of ghostly figures, barely on the... Um, you kind of have to turn your head to see them out the corner of your eye, kind of lurking behind Nib, taking various forms. 
uh, from kind of a, a taller uh, individual to a couple of smaller like children like figures crowding around him uh, you can see when they do nib starts to kind of sweat and focus on his work extra hard what's with your friends mm. friends <laughs> I'm haunted by my own words. As long as my ill-gotten gains were put to good use, my bad deeds would remain behind me. You are beholding the restless apparitions of those I hurt. I lurk behind my back, tormenting me with pokes at my ribs and whispers in my ear. I can't bear to look them in the eye after what I've done. Well, you know... And Calvin will walk up to him and place a hand on his shoulder and say, Everybody deserves a second chance. And I have I have faith that you're you'll turn it around. Even after your ill gotten gains are are gone and you've worked through this deal that you've made. I think you'll come out better on the other side. Pause Did you give a green a thumbs up? <laughs> I thank you for that. I can't lie, this cave has certainly worn out its welcome, but I've got quite a substantial amount of gold to go. Uh, it looks like he's probably got about 15,000 gold pieces left. But as uh, he has spoken to you, each of the items he's made for you has taken about 500 gold pieces of those. So, uh, Kelvin will just kind of go into a slight little tangent about the top hat that he wants uh and essentially it's just like a regular top hat just uh the fabric all looks golden right that yeah we'll retain wearing. some of the the hue correct yeah so just uh like the golden top hat with like a a band around the brim um and basically it would be a headband of intellect if you will allow that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Top hat of intellect. Yes, exactly. I love it. I'm going to have to edit uh, Kelvin's picture again now. <laughs> uh, but he does, Nib does offer you, uh, you're welcome to rest here and that he warns you against obviously taking any of the gold lest you be cursed like him although you guys don't seem like the kind of people to do that so you won't push it that hard uh if there's anything you want to ask about the kind of the area the forest the climate things like that uh while he works you're welcome to do so because he is kind of working on your items bit by bit i'll ask him about the sister um don't we have to get the portrait of the family room for? Ask her like where we could find her. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, he would. Uh, you look to deal with the same creature that put this curse on me, Granny Nightshade, as she's known. Terrifying creature. She has. Uh, she has a base of operations in Loom Lurch across the forest. She captures lost children and forces them to work in a toy workshop making uh, macabre and deranged gifts. Rather, rather terrible person. You should be careful. There's a, you can tell her mood by the giant key protruding from her back depending on how fast it turns, you see. Uh, when she's happy, it turns quickly. And when she's upset, it turns slower. Uh, and uh, if it ever stops completely, you need to beware. Thank you for the information. Okay, but um, he will kind of go on to say, uh, there are many children working at Granny Nightshade's workshop, crafting toys mostly. And she delivers these toys to children on other worlds to fill their heads with nightmares. Uh, I assume 
she makes these deliveries on the back of uh, some kind of flying uh, rocking horse. And he kind of lapses into silence for a bit before. And recently the obsession has been with capturing his will of the Feywild. He kind of um, gestures into the air with the hand. Apparently some young boy who helped a handful of other children escape Loom Lurch. They formed some kind of motley group of rascals known as the Getaway Gang. Getaway? Might have to check them out. Pay them a visit. They make their home um, amongst the tree, uh, amongst the branch tops of Little Oak. A, um, a, a treant that uh, keeps them safe. He you can point. He can point you in the direction of Little Oak, kind of favorite glade. Give you a rough idea of where in the forest you may be able to find them. But otherwise, uh, you are welcome to long rest here before continuing on, uh, or at least continuing to work on the balloon. Uh, he will help you as much as he can. He can't really make thread for you, unfortunately, due to the nature of his curse. But uh, there are bits of uh, odds and ends in the cave that have accumulated over time, which maybe could help you in repairing the balloon. Yeah, if, if the uh, the holes are within reach now, I can I can cast my mending on them and help Clapper Claw get that all patched up. Yeah, totally. Uh, the only problem is a lack of marsh gas. Okay. So, uh, you're going to have to come up with some kind of plan or think of an alternative. Go look at the party. And goes, as far as the balloon goes, I can help with the holes, but what are we going to do about the gas? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you see Clapperclaw looking around. We could try set up some skunk traps, maybe. I'm hmm, not sure where else we could find that much gas in the forest. Y'all agree to help him in any way I can. I'm pretty good at trapping. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. Okay. Well, if, uh, let's see here, if you guys would like to give me some, if you're looking for creatures in particular, most likely survival checks. Yeah, I'll go ahead and look for those skunks he's talking about. Moon got 14. And 14, very nice. Okay, uh, spreading out and uh, kind of looking around in the nearby areas, you start to uh, kind of peek into the uh, forested uh, surrounds as well. And with the 14, uh, you find yourself going into a bit of a... The, the forest is pretty thick, so as soon as you step under the canopy, everything does darken uh, quite a fair amount. And uh, as you look around um, Moon Moon, you realize that the it's not a change in... Uh, the trees on the environment or anything here. Uh, this strange hue that's come over the area around you is because of a film of webbing. And you realize you're in... Uh, probably close to where some kind of creature makes its home. Okay. You would... Um, Oh, how are you approaching the situation? Would you like to make a perception check or a nature check 
to try and ascertain what would live in webs like that, anything like this. Are you guys, did you split up uh, when you went looking for this or you kind of generally stuck together? Uh, I'm going to generally stick by yeah. someone. Yeah, I might as well. Trying to keep together. Okay. Um, so any, yeah, movement, what you doing? I'll, I'll roll perception to see what I see, but can I also roll acrobatics to make sure that I don't touch the webbing? Sure. Uh, perception, eight. Uh, acrobatics, 24. All right. Uh, as you... Well, let's get you into the right map here. Looks something like this. Uh, acrobatics 24, you jump out of the way. And uh, where's your token? Let's get you down here. Oh, wait, this doesn't really need dynamic lighting. Turn that off. And Sydney, you put Ben Breck there. Uh, jumping out of, well, not just jumping, uh, kind of trying to not touch any of the webbing. Uh, you unfortunately do not see the creature above that launches out, and it's going to attempt to bite down on you. It was hiding in the trees above and now descends uh, startlingly fast. So we're going to have one bite attack with advantage as it was hidden. A six, uh, you just step out of the way as this kind of tick-like creature drops down from the trees above. Uh, you hear rustling in all the branches around us. There are more of them, and you find yourself somewhat surrounded as uh, we are going straight into initiative. So let's get some rolls from you guys. Don't forget to select your tokens first. And are uh, you welcome to make nature checks or anything like that? Uh, to determine what kind of creatures these are uh, or anything like that. So I don't see any initiatives yet. I rolled a 10. It has never worked for me to click my token. Uh, that's fine. Where am I? Initiatize this. Perfect. Um, you said we can do a nature check to see what we're dealing with? Yes, if you'd like to. Oh yeah, I'm going to do that. And I'll guidance myself. Ah, uh, that won't matter. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, but in the meantime, uh, it looks like, Kelvin, you are the first to react. Uh, what are you going to be doing? Uh... So, hold on, let me cl clarify here. The one next yeah. to Moon Moon it would have been there. That one is in the on the ground. You can hear kind of rustling in the treetops as there are more of them around. Um, and you kind of start to pick out bits of movement up in the branches. So, only this one is on the ground for now. Okay. Uh, seeing that, Kelvin will run up near Moon Moon and say... I don't know what that thing is, but I hope it's not dangerous. And then just swing a great axe at it. <laughs> For uh, a and... 30-20. Oh yeah, I'm good. For nine points of slashing damage. Nice. You're the you just scream out in pain, kind of stumbling back somewhat, uh, blood just uh, splattering the ground. Uh, anything else? Uh, just, let's see. It's an action. Kelvin is just kind of stand beside Moon Moon and say, I got you, buddy. And that's the end of Kelvin's turn. 
All right, Sydney. All right. With my repeating shot, I can take a, I can shoot as an action and a bonus action, right? I don't have to reload it. Or. Uh, what weapon are you referring to? The uh, the light crossbow I have the repeating shot on. His artificer infused. Uh, yeah, crossbow. yeah. I'm just thinking. Um, I don't think you're able to attack as a bonus action unless you kind of got two hand crossbows. I uh, just. Wait, am I misunderstanding this? That means if you have an extra attack, then you don't have to reload between those attacks. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I just wanted to confirm. Yeah, seeing yeah, this cause... thing kind of try and take a bite out of Moon, I'll whip out my crossbow and uh, lob a bolt at it. Beautiful. Oof. Almost a crit. Roll damage on that. Hey. Wow. Very nice. As uh, 10... Yeah, 10 damage to this creature... Uh, it is looks like it's taken a fair amount of damage already. Not bloodied yet, uh, but are you staying where you are, Sydney? Anything else from you? Uh, no, I'll go up towards uh, where Moon is. Be like, ain't going to give these things a free lunch now. And then I end my turn. Sure. Uh, all right, well, that'll I'll, I'll do Ben Rick's turn next. Moon, Moon, what are you doing in the meantime? Um, I'm going to try to make a run for this tree area and use zoom in and try to uh, break line of sight and uh no tax opportunity for you you got a feat no 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 i'm 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 taking it oh okay cool uh he will definitely make it let's see here i think probably just another bite yeah Wow, okay, not rolling very well. Yeah, you dodge, you hear these uh, pincers slam shut just above your head. Okay, with a 23 of her stealth, um, I'm going to do, come back out from around the tree and try to uh, make an attack on it. Uh, so you're just stealthing for advantage, because you, you would have sneak it to friends over there, right? Uh, yes. Yep, yep. Still checking uh, your reasoning there. Well, you, that will give you advantage. You are hidden. Uh, what would you... you like to make an attack? Yes. Sure. Uh, 19. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Uh, 7 damage. And 7 more. 14 damage. Oh, very nice. Uh, the creature is stumbling back, looking pretty wounded after this flurry of attacks against it. Uh, are you ending your turn there? Uh, yes. All right. That'll bring us to these creatures uh, who begin to retaliate. Uh, this one just covered in wounds and uh, looking pretty bad. It's going to launch forward at uh, you guys in front of it. So... It's going to step forward. It's going to slash out with its claws at um, Kelvin while taking a bite at Sydney. So Kelvin, th oh, 13 is not going to do it. Seven. Oh, my rolls are in the bin tonight. Okay. Uh, one <laughs> does move over. Um, <laughs> it has uh, Web Walker. So it does. Uh, you can see it like scurrying along between the treetops uh, that have these strands of salt running between them as it lowers down uh, let's see here it is going to be unseen and it is going to web garot at uh, moon moon so, uh, shooting out a bit of uh, string here it's going to try and grab it around your neck Ooh, which it manages. That's going to be six bludgeoning as uh, you feel your throat getting constricted. Uh, you cannot breathe while you are grappled. And while you are grappled this way, you cannot breathe. And uh, while... Well, let's just check here. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, it doesn't get to use this multi-attack, but Web Garot. So it's just got you in the background. Uh, as for this third one, it is going to scream angrily and... 
Mm -hmm. I think it'll jump down. No, it'll stay from the in the top, and it will try webbing at. Uh, who looks stronger here? I'd say. Would it, would it be fair to say Sydney looks uh, weaker than Kelvin? Or what are their strength scores like? Uh, Sydney looks very weak. He he's more smart looking. Okay. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, then it is going to wave at you, because you would probably struggle to uh, escape that a bit more. So, you feel the web cover you. Uh, it's no check for it. You can make a check to escape, uh, or, or destroying it in some sense, but you are temporarily restrained, and it only regains its web ability on a 5 or a 6. Uh, and it will stay up in the trees for now. That brings us to the top of the round again with Kelvin. I can see this oh, one wait, here, uh, or is it? Ben Rick will make an attack. Sorry, let me just. Uh, uh, oh, his sheet is not pulled in. I think you guys are just gonna go solo for now. That's fine. Uh, yeah, he's a roll twenty one... character. He's on the ground. He's in front of you. He's looking bad. Yeah. Okay. So looking at him and then seeing what just happened to Sydney, Kelvin's going to uh, start getting a little defensive over his friends and his hair will start to stand up and he'll start to tap his foot really fast and when he taps his foot this time for whatever reason uh like uh like purple and blue uh like magical or uh uh sparks start emanating from his foot and he's going to rage uh and now nice. so let me let me throw this for you uh do you want to narrate it, or do you want me to? Or his... Oh, you can go for it. Okay, let's see. As he starts to rage, a bolt of light shoots from his chest. Uh, another creature of my choice you can see within 30 feet. You must succeed on a constitution saving throw, or take radiant damage. Until my rage ends, you can use this effect again on each of your turns as a bonus action. Uh, so, yeah, he starts stomping his foot, and uh, a bolt of light of like purple and blue light just sparks out at this creature in front of him and it needs to make uh he made a con save and it is i think it fails uh it doesn't it's say... gonna be eight plus proficiency plus con modifier eight proficiency 10 con modifier uh 12. okay then he will just save unfortunately beats it beats it yep Yep. I don't know what happened there, but, uh, <laughs> uh, he's just going to take his great axe and swing at it. Not really understanding. All right. For, uh, dirty Oof. 20 again. Jeez. That is... Uh, five points of slashing damage. Nice. Uh, screech from this creature. It's looking very close to dropping. It's a movement is getting sluggish, uh, but it's not there yet. Uh, anything else from you, Kelvin? Uh, Kelvin is going to stay where he's at. And that's it. Very well. So, Sydney, uh, keep in mind you are restrained by the webbing. Uh, it's not a very high DC, DC 11 strength check, but it's an action to escape. Otherwise, you can still cast and do things. Me. Uh, no, that was Sydney. You are getting garroted. You've got a web around your throat like okay. like a steel wire, and you're getting choked out. Uh, Sydney, what are you doing? I'm going to try and break through from the web. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Nope. Yeah. Um, you can make that athletics, but I doubt you have athletics, but an eight. Fortunately, is not going to do it. Uh, you still have a bonus action if you can do something, but that's it. Uh, let's see, bonus action. No. Okay. I was, I was grunting and grunting and be like, get, get off of me! <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, not able to get free of the web. Uh, so, uh, Moon Moon, choking, <laughs> uh, you are grappled. What are you doing? Sorry about that. Um, can I attack the wire? Yes, you can. Uh, 23. That'll do it. It only has five hit points. 
It snaps. You can feel the air blowing back into your lungs as uh, you drop to your knees. Uh, what are you doing? Um... Can I make an attack on the one that is almost dead? If you have another attack, yeah. Okay. Uh, an 11. Just goes shy into the ground. Okay, cool. Back to these creatures. Uh, this one getting attacked by uh, Calvin is just uh, gonna retaliate in kind with the bite and a claw, uh, both at you now. As uh, oh, it actually managed to land something there. Uh, it's a twenty to hit you for seven slashing. This one comes up from behind. It's from uh, and uh, slashing, you said. Correct. Yeah. So you will uh, take half of that. The other one comes up from behind, and it is going to. It's going to garrot Sydney uh, because it can only use the garrot on a creature that it has advantage on the attack roll on. Uh, so it's going to make a garrot attack, which is going to be an 18 to hit you for five bludgeoning. And uh, you feel your throat get caught up, Sydney. Uh, you are currently choking, unable to breathe. Um, uh, and you are grappled. So unfortunately, not <laughs> looking too good there. Uh, the one that uh, is just lost moon moon is going to angrily lash out with its bite and uh, try and claw back at you uh, it's going to just make two claw attacks actually moon moon that's uh, a 22 to hit you for five slashing the other one thankfully misses okay and that'll bring us back around to Kelvin uh, Calvin seeing what just happened to Sydney um, he's going to try to break the uh uh, the garrot uh, around Sydney, uh, if it's possible, okay. by utilizing that uh, that lightning, if if that can be done, uh, shooting a bolt of lightning from his chest at the creature, attempting to like sever whatever he's doing to him. Maybe that's doable. An interesting, interesting idea. Because uh, they make a con save, and then you... Sure. Let's get a con save from him. Yeah, it all hinges on that anyway. <laughs> uh, 13. Just just 13. makes it. <laughs> well, alright, so... Getting a little frustrated with the Great Axe. Uh, he's going to try to cut that garrot. Cut that, uh, that line between Sydney and the creature. Hopefully that hits it. Yeah, easy <laughs> enough. Five HP on that. Okay, so it does four plus two, six. Oh, oh it's plus two, of course. Thank goodness. Yep. I was about to say. Uh, yeah, <laughs> with that, it does. It does snap. Okay. I got you, buddy. Kind of in a pickle oh, here. Oi. Oi. And that's that's the end of Felvin's turn. Okay, Sydney. So you're still restrained by the web, but thankfully you can breathe again. Uh, you can still attack and cast spells and stuff. Your attacks are a disadvantage. Um, so what are you doing? Um. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot. Uh, oh, I need to get out of the. I'm gonna move right about right here. So and you're uh, shoot still another... trapped in the web. You oh, so move. I can't move. Okay. Yeah. Then I'll I'll uh I'll shoot a bolt at that one right there next to Moon. Uh, so, it unfortunately, it is going to be with disadvantage, because you are Oh, yeah, disadvantage. Well. <laughs> Oof, seven is going to go wide. Um, yeah, fortunately, not able to. Just getting thrown a bit um, with these creatures fighting around you, trying to not get hit by Calvin's great axe as he's attacking mm -hmm. around you as well. As I love, I, I let Moon know, I'm like, heads up! <laughs> <laughs> You do hear in the distance, uh, calling after you guys, Clapper Claw. 
and he kind of does come stumbling in. He's going to be joining in in the start of next round as he sees what's happening and does run towards the noise. All right, uh, Moon Moon. Um, I'm going to attack the one that is hurt badly. Sure. A 16. Yep. Or 16. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, it just kind of drops, uh, pushed into Kelvin, he just pushes him back onto the ground, it collapses. And then the one above me, I rolled a nat 20. For 10 Very damage. nice. Ten damage uh, to the one by you, perfect. And a re sent reeling from its position in the webs and the trees. This one, you can see the corpse erupts into like hundreds of little spiders that crawl out. Not a swarm of spiders that attacks you, but kind of dispersing into the forest. Um, anything else for your turn, Moon Moon? Um. <clears throat> no, I don't. All right, like Clap Claw comes running into the scene. That's his turn here, and it's going to bring us to Etta Caps. So this one is—it's uh, had its victim taken away uh, by Kelvin, and it's not too pleased with that. It's going to spin around. First of all, let's see if it gets its web back. It does. Okay. Sure does. And I think it's just going to spit that at you, Kelvin, and it's going to web you up real good before turning its attention back to Sydney. Hopefully that web will hold you for a while. Um, I'll roll for the other Etikap as well. He does not, so he's just going to swing around and start noshing on Moon Moon as much as possible. It's going to be a bite and a clause. 16 to hit for four slashing is the highest he gets, unfortunately, for him. Um, I'm going to actually use shield. Okay, nice. Yeah. Does not manage to find purchase thrown off by this blue barrier of force. Brings us to the top of the round. Uh, restrained. Kelvin, what you doing? Uh, can Kelvin use whatever this wild magic lightning chest bolt that he has to try to get unrestrained utilize it to to hit the webs around him uh no not, not okay. in this sense i gotcha <laughs> thought i'd ask uh still going to look at the one that just webbed him and um well first uh action to try to break out of it right yep athletics check athletics okay Trying to break free for a 22. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice, nice. And then he's going to turn to him uh, and just look at him. And he starts to shake and, like, purple and blue energy starts to coalesce on his chest. And he does, like, the, the Iron Man, like, arms and elbows go back. Chest flies forward and just shoots a big <laughs> bolt <laughs> from his chest at him. Uh, and can say, hey, nice. Okay, let me pull it back up. <laughs> and he takes... Does that blind him as well? Uh, yep, blind him to the start of my next turn. And that is awesome. additionally four points of radiant damage, I believe. Okay. And then Calvin is gonna... Um... Bunny hop away for a moment, and that's the end of Kelvin's turn. Okay, that'll uh, bring us over to unfortunately a very wrapped up in web Sydney. What you doing? Um, gonna try and break again. All right, athletics check or strength check. Yeah. Oh, dude, don't you have? Oh God, this is an action. <laughs> Never mind. That really hurts. Okay, unfortunately, yeah. not able to get free of this Etikap's embrace. You can see these drooling 
um, mandibles hungrily uh, trying to reach down for you. It is blind currently, so it's not doing too well. Um, Sydney's getting very visibly frustrated that he can't break out of this web. Uh, well, Moon Moon, uh, up against another one. What are you doing? Um, I am going to use... Um, use my attack to try to, um, no, I'll use, I'll use Mage Hand to try to help, uh, break, uh, the webbing. All right. Uh, so you're wanting to give him advantage on his turn, or do you want to make a check of your own now? Uh, is there any way I can make a check on my own? And what would that be? It would be a, a strength check. The webbing is not very strong, so... We'll say oh, roll a d20 Sydney, for so. us. <laughs> say again. Tell that to Sydney. You can roll a d20, I would, would say. Like a strength check. Um, you're not proficient <laughs> in strength checks, I imagine. So you just make a base strength check or a dex check. If you're proficient, it'll, it'll carry through. <coughs> okay. Uh, then I'll try attacking it instead. Sure. Uh, 22. That'll hit. Glad it wasn't low. Uh, for 7. Sure. Uh, and you can, you feel Sydney a great, uh, kind of loosening as a ripping sound as uh, dagger flies down the side of it, and, uh, you are able to move again. Oh, thank you kindly, Moon. And then 11 does not hit these creatures, right? No. Okay. That core just comes running in screaming wailing uh shaking his claws around and uh he will and does uh, he have gonna to make him find the creature he would yes and oh he's pity is whispering because he just got a natural 20 but i'm just gonna keep that roll and uh as he stabs into this creature beginning to like pull the he's got pretty big claws they're oversized but you can see that they do some damage that's 10 points of slashing from him for his crit Ooh. and he's going to use his bonus action to use his unsettling presence and he's going to try scare this creature uh wisdom save okay nope not too scared but uh he's going to turn around to this new creature that crit him and uh is going to attack clapper claw instead now and uh only the first one will hit for three piercing, Clapperclaw needs to make a save. And quick question: Would that be disadvantaged? Is it blinded? Oh yeah, thank you for reminding me. It totally would, and uh, he would miss definitely. Uh, the other one up against Moon Moon. Uh, let's see. It sees its friends dead. It sees the other one kind of writhing blindly. Uh, let's see if he gets his web back first of all. He does. He is going to web Moon Moon, so he's going to restrain you for now, and then start spinning out another garrote for you. I think in the meantime, uh, Kelvin. Uh, Kelvin, let's see. Okay, Kelvin is just barely through the the trees. Is going to see what's. Hopefully, we'll see what's happening to Moon Moon. Look at that creature and. <laughs> Iron Man pulls him with uh, with energy. I am Kelvin Ha. Yep. Ah, oh, cheese Louise. Uh, and then being irritated that it's this newfound thing, he he still can't he can't hone it properly, so he's gonna have to practice. But he's still going to run uh, over there with his great axe and swing at the creature. Or a Ready. Ooh, that was low. For a nine. To hit. Braid, not the creature, just ducks out of the way, sidestepping, and Sydney finally free of your restraints. What are you doing? Um. 
I think... Six... What are the chances of me igniting the forest on fire if I cast a firebolt at this thing? Not very high. It's quite moist in here. Okay, that's what I was thinking. So yeah, um, seeing him web up Moon and getting ready to grout him like he did me, um, Sydney, I'll point at him and be like, oh, not so fast there. I'll lob a firebolt. Nice. I'll yell fire in the hole. <laughs> it just goes up into the trees and just... Fire um, in the hole! Sizzles on a couple of leaves, unfortunately, not... Not close enough. So you're just gonna like kind of put a finger up and then just get this defeated look on his face. <laughs> That'll bring us back around to Moon Moon. You can see these creatures are definitely reconsidering. This one looks like it's uh, now that Calvin is here, uh, almost like it's uh, trying to get back up into the trees. But Moon Moon, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to attack it. Yep, that's how. Uh, Thirteen. That will just hit. Okay. Uh, and then the second attack was a uh, nat 20. Very nice. So 11. 16 for the first one. Sure. And. Uh, 23 damage altogether. All right. Keep in mind that uh, your second one doesn't have the mod. Of... No, wait, it does. Okay, nineteen six. This thing is looking really bad after that. Uh, you can see it is. Oh, oh. It is struggling. Uh, it is desperately trying to escape. Uh, is that going to be your turn? Ah, uh, yes. Papaclaw just kind of, he's gone uh, full uh, savage. He's not thinking, not doing anything. He's just uh, ripping at it. Unfortunately, it doesn't um, get hit. This one now, this one is going to disengage. You see it moving up into the trees, using the webs to move between. Uh, it is going to try and get a bit of distance and uh, try and like lose itself in the uh, foliage. Doesn't get to take a full hide action, though. Uh, this one is not blind anymore. And hmm, let's see if he gets his webbing back. Although I don't think he wants to use that. He's going to launch out a clap claw again. Oop, that's a lot. Hold on. Capclaw is not looking good. I forgot to he forgot to take his damage last turn. He doesn't take the poison damage, thankfully. Uh, but you can see rips and tears. Uh, there's like his stuffing is starting to pour out. Uh, it's not looking good. Kelvin. Uh seeing that Clapperclaw is having some some issues. Um Kelvin is going to turn. Stuff is being weird. Move over slightly. Turn to this other creature right beside Clapperclaw. And release a, a bolt of purple and blue lightning in this direction from his chest. Hoping this Hey, blind it again. Hey, nice. So then immediately we'll take the great axe and like run anime style with it like almost touching the ground behind him. And just swing up. Uh, at it, and that's at advantage, awesome. correct? Yep. Yep, okay. yep, yep. On. Oh, natural 20. Very nice. Let's go. Why did that... Did that roll two? No, it still only rolled it, 1d12. It not. So, yeah, it even showed up 2d12, but let me, let me roll another one here. Oh my gosh. 11, 12, 13, 14 points. Okay. Um, yeah, it's looking damage. pretty bad. <laughs> trying to like lash out. Not even really sure where you are. Uh, just swinging out where the attacks are coming from. Yep. And that's the end of uh, Elvis' turn. Sydney. 
All right, seeing Clapperclaw um, quickly deteriorate, deteriorating in condition, um, I'll go ahead and um, use my bonus action to cast Healing Word on him for five. <laughs> nice. Terrible. He is extremely grateful. You can see uh, some of the tears close up again. And kind of take a step out of range and then lob a bolt at that uh that beastie near him sure you've been rolling so many sevens <laughs> unluckily lucky twos <laughs> yeah uh so uh you see a nearby squirrel just drop out of the tree behind it to the ground with the bolt in it <laughs> Uh, is that going to be your turn? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Get me moved. Sorry. Enemies wounded. Uh, 26 to hit. Oh, yeah. And a 12. First one. Eight. Uh, are you attacking from range or melee? Uh, range. Okay. First one hits. Uh, 12 on the one that was. Uh, tried running from me. Oh, okay, that one. I'm sorry. Uh, I should have been specific. No, that's fine. With that, uh, you thread it through a couple of branches, and uh, you just see the body drop out of the tree, uh, satisfyingly. Okay. Papaclaw is... Uh, he's a bit thrown by that. Uh, you can see he is... Grabbing at plants, plant matter around him, and just trying to restuff himself. Uh, he's just going to try and get a bit of health here. Uh, he is going to regain ten hit points. Very nice. nice. He's back to full health. Ah, ah. You can see, like there, there's some tears, and he's like uh, looks a bit like chubbier than normal. He's got like more stopping than than, than he's <laughs> used to. He's, he's padding himself out. Um, <laughs> that brings us to this, uh, uh, the Eta Cap will disengage, and uh, it's not blinded anymore, right? Uh, or, or would it still be? I yeah, just I'm blinded, so I think, so it, it would be, no yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Didn't you do that on your last no, turn? It was, you it, he, it? he would be, he wouldn't be blinded anymore, because it was at the start Thank of you. my next turn, I believe. Yeah, and I just okay. had my last turn, so yeah. Uh, he's just going to disengage and try and get out of here. He's going to get about 20 feet, and uh, you can see it kind of climbing up into the trees using the webs uh, to gain as much cover as possible. Um, you guys are welcome to call initiative here, or you can keep chasing it down. That'll bring us to a fresh round uh, with Sydney. Um, oh, I was I was at the top of the round. Um, oh wait, what happened to you? Oh, you changed your token. Yeah, yeah it took me did. out of the turn order. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was wondering. I was like, wait, how did it go from it to me? Yeah. Uh, coward. Clapper call. You okay, <laughs> Cindy Moon? I'm good. Um, are we out I'm of combat still, now? I'm or? still. If you want. If you want to let it flee, you're welcome to break combat. Are you chasing after it, or are you breaking combat? Uh, no, it is not. I'm going to focus on oh, no, Clapperclaw's at full health. Um, I think I'll just shoot a bolt at it. Sure. Make a roll. Calvin, did you say you're not interested? Nope. Not interested. I... All right. Min Min? Uh, while it was still Calvin's turn, I did... Uh, try to communicate. I'm still restrained, but if he's not interested in, in fighting anymore, then it doesn't matter. Uh. Well, uh, scoppering off into the uh, webbings in the trees, this creature licking its wounds definitely not going to bother you uh, for any time soon. Uh, you can easily go and free your companion. So did you say you were going to take one last shot at it? Yeah, I'm taking one last pot shot at it for 12 to hit. No, sorry, it's got a 13 ACI. That's unfortunately going to miss. It does have a bit of cover from being in the trees. I'll just yell, yeah, you better run! 
shaking my fist angrily at it. <laughs> Alright, Moon Moon, stand still. And Kelvin will stow the, the great axe, take out a uh, little hand axe, and begin to chop away at the, the webs. Nice. While this Easy is happening, can I launch the bat up and do it a small circle? Just using his blind sight to see Yeah, sure. Uh, see if there's what in particular you're looking for? To make sure that they're not gathering and going to re-attack or anything. Yeah, okay. That's, gathered, that's all. He takes off uh, kind of into the nearby uh, above the canopy. You hear these little chirps kind of echoing down. Um, every now and again coming back to let you know what he finds. It uh, doesn't look like there's anything in the immediate area, and it kind of will keep you updated as he finds more. Okay. And uh, you can see kind of Clapper Claw. <laughs> Forest is a bit more dangerous than I remember here. I think things might have changed since Granny took over. We should... I'll go to Clapperclaw and ask, like, you need any help with that? And I'll, I'll kind of cast Mending on his uh, his openings. Thank you. I appreciate that. He was uh, he was full, so to speak, but uh, he could definitely use a close-up. And he would have had to sew it himself. Well, maybe it looks like we might have to go a little bit on foot for now. Hopefully we'll find something to get the balloon back up and running. But no point in wasting time. It should be a couple of days walk at most to Loom Lurch if you guys want to hoof it. I think that might be best. Come nod. Let's go say goodbye to Nib. He must be done with your items by now. Maybe he can give us some supplies to get us going. And uh, Clapperclaw kind of starts to push the way back up to the glow of the cave in the distance. Um, but I think for this week, that's where we're going to call today's session. We'll pick up next time heading off into the forests uh, of uh, the, the Properly.